Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. Fiscal policy will affect economic conditions. However, it will also have an impact on the federal budget. The federal budget is the recorded projection of all government expenditures and revenues over the course of a 12-month period. Prior to the start of a new fiscal year, which begins on October 1st, the government must design a budget that accounts for all the anticipated tax revenues and discretionary and non-discretionary fiscal spending. In other words, what is the government projected to collect in revenue, and how is it going to spend it? Government revenue is defined as the total income gained by government at all levels through tax policies, including income taxes, excise taxes, and regulatory taxes. Government expenditures is defined as the total spending by government at all levels, including discretionary and non-discretionary purchases. Based on the level of revenue and spending that is recorded for the fiscal year, the federal budget can be in several different conditions. The first condition is budget surplus. Budget surplus exists when government revenues exceed government expenditures in a fiscal year. Essentially, the government isn't spending all the revenue it has at its disposal and has more money than it needs for its fiscal expenditures. When a budget surplus exists, the government is spending within its means. The second condition is budget deficit. Budget deficit exists when government expenditures exceed government revenues in a fiscal year. Essentially, the government does not have enough revenue at its disposal to fund all of its fiscal expenditures. When a budget deficit exists, the government is spending beyond its means. This usually means that government has to borrow money to fund its budget expenditures. The third condition is a balanced budget. A balanced budget exists when government revenues equal government expenditures. There is no deficit. There is no surplus. Dollar for dollar, tax revenue equals fiscal spending. Balancing the budget seems pretty simple. Just don't spend more than you have and live within your means. I mean, if we can do it, then why can't the government? But balancing the federal budget is nothing like balancing a household budget. In fact, it's incredibly difficult to do. Between 1970 and 2017, the federal government experienced 42 budget deficits, only five budget surpluses, and has never had a balanced budget. But why? Well, there are several reasons. First, there is a part of the federal budget that is actually uncontrollable. Every fiscal year, the federal government must repay interest and principal on the national debt. The national debt is the accumulation of all budget deficits over time. There is a portion of government revenue that must be allocated to pay interest on the debt and pay down principal on the debt itself. This means that government has less available revenue for discretionary spending, which moves the federal budget towards a deficit annually. Also, neither Congress nor the President have as much control over budgetary conditions as we think. You see, budget surpluses and deficits are as much a result of cyclical fluctuations in the aggregate economy as fiscal policy is. This is called cyclical balance. During a period of economic contraction, the unemployment rate increases, leading to an increase in non-discretionary fiscal spending. Income and consumption levels decrease, leading to a decrease in tax revenues. As revenues fall and spending increases, the federal budget naturally moves towards a deficit. This is called cyclical deficit. During a period of economic expansion, the unemployment rate decreases, leading to a decrease in non-discretionary fiscal spending. Income and consumption levels increase, leading to an increase in tax revenues. As revenues rise and spending decreases, the federal budget naturally moves towards a surplus. This is called cyclical surplus. In both examples, notice that neither Congress nor the President took any direct action to cause budget conditions to change. Instead, the federal budget moved towards deficit or surplus simply due to changes in economic conditions, which triggered changes in tax revenues and non-discretionary fiscal policy. This type of cyclical balance has impacted budgetary conditions in the United States for decades. In fact, the budget surpluses of the Clinton administration were created in part to the economic boom of the late 1990s as tax revenues grew and non-discretionary spending shrank with economic growth. And the budget deficits of the Bush and Obama administrations were worsened by a dramatic decrease in tax revenues and an increase in automatic stabilizers 
during the massive contraction of the Great Recession. Whether the federal budget is in surplus, deficit, or balance depends entirely on the combination of cyclical balance and structural balance that exists. Structural balance is defined as the budget surpluses and deficits that result from the use of discretionary fiscal policy. For example, when the aggregate economy is experiencing a recessionary gap, government implements expansionary fiscal policy by increasing its expenditures, decreasing personal taxes, or using a combination of both. In the budget, these policy options are known as fiscal stimulus. While these policies may increase aggregate demand and create economic growth, the government is spending more and losing revenue, causing the federal budget to move toward a deficit. For example, suppose that the economy of country X is experiencing a $500 billion recessionary gap. The marginal propensity to consume is 0.5, and the budget is balanced. If the government passes fiscal stimulus that increases its spending by $250 billion, it would increase aggregate demand and generate $500 billion in real GDP output, returning the economy to full employment. However, if the government doesn't raise taxes by $250 billion to fund the new government spending measures, then it would open a $250 billion budget deficit in country X. If instead, the government decided to increase its expenditures by $200 billion and combine that with a $100 billion decrease in personal taxes, it would increase aggregate demand and generate $500 billion in real GDP output, returning the economy to full employment. However, because the government increased its spending by $200 billion, it would open a $200 billion budget deficit in country X. Then, when the government reduced taxes by $100 billion, it increased the budget deficit by an additional $100 billion. The entire fiscal stimulus package opened a $300 billion budget deficit in country X. When the economy is experiencing an inflationary gap, government implements contractionary fiscal policy by decreasing its expenditures, increasing personal income taxes, or using a combination of both. In the budget, these policy options are known as fiscal restraint. While these policies may decrease aggregate demand and cause economic contraction, the government is spending less and taking in more revenue, causing the federal budget to move toward a surplus. For example, suppose that the economy of country Z is experiencing a $400 billion inflationary gap. The marginal propensity to consume is 0.8 and the budget is balanced. If the government passes fiscal restraint, that decreases its spending by $80 billion, it would decrease aggregate demand and reduce real GDP output by $400 billion, returning the economy to full employment. Even if the government doesn't change tax policy, this policy would create an $80 billion budget surplus in country Z because the government has reduced its expenditures. If instead the government decided to decrease its expenditures by $60 billion and combine that with a $25 billion increase in personal taxes, it would decrease aggregate demand and reduce real GDP output by $400 billion, returning the economy to full employment. However, because the government decreased its spending by $60 billion, it would create a $60 billion budget surplus in country Z. Then, when the government raised taxes by $25 billion, it increased the budget surplus by an additional $25 billion. The entire fiscal restraint package opened an $85 billion budget surplus in country Z. And that's the federal budget. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my video on problems of fiscal policy or you can click here for my macro minute video on deficit versus debt. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.